This is Justin Case of American Newscape, joining our friend and lifestyle luminary Joyce Rockwood. Joyce joins us to share everything sweet, how to break sugar addiction. Greetings, Joyce. Welcome back to American Newscape. But you're going to call me sugar. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not going to call you sugar. I'm not going to call you sweetness. I'm not going to do any of those things. Princess. You can call me the, the Rinse Princess. Yeah, the Sweetener Princess. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Joyce, a lot, of, a lot of people struggle with sugar addiction. It's no wonder because sugar is mm. abundant in so many foods and we, that we eat daily. We might not even suspect to find it in. Yeah, it's amazing what they added to. Okay, when it comes to reducing sugar consumption, what's your approach to helping people do that in a way that's sustainable for them? Yeah, the sustainability part is important, right? Because if you're dealing with addiction, I mean, you're looking for long-term results. And I think that, you know, one of the things that I uh, pride myself on is supporting people with having consistency and having accountability so that they can get there. So before we talk about the options that I share with my clients in terms of healthier, healthier sugars and helping them like break the sugar addiction, what I wanna do first is just kind of break things down a little bit and talk about what sugar actually does in the body. And I think that's important because when you understand, it makes it easier and more desirable to feel more motivated to want to make the changes. So let's just talk about glucose for a second. Like things like grains and carbohydrates, they're almost pure glucose. And while those things take a while to break down in the body, um, that does mean that they go into the bloodstream pretty slowly. And the glucose leaves a residue in the portal vein, which is the first stop at the liver. And if the liver needs a lot of energy, and it, then it will absorb the glucose, right? There's a whole system here. If the liver has substantial energy, then the majority of that glucose is going to move past the liver and then be delivered to the rest of your body and used by the rest of your body as, it's, as it needs it, as it sees fit. So let's consider for a second something like high fructose corn syrup. We see that laden in so many and it's laden in a lot of foods because it's very cheap it's very cost effective um, it's also highly addictive so high fructose corn syrup things that um, things with with this particular ingredient are, are, are different than when we're talking about grains and starches okay so here we're about foods like soda flavored power drinks cakes condiments to see sugar and ketchup which is like crazy, uh, candy, yogurt, power bars, all of those kinds of products. And the fructose is also delivered to the liver the same in this capacity, like the starch and the grains. However, there's an enzyme, a liver enzyme that, that's always turned on. Okay. And it takes all of the fructose it can, and then it gets a little, it, and it takes all of the fructose that it can, that, that it can get. And um, those liver cells and, and enter into the liver and get absorbed by those cells. Now, even if the liver, even if the body has substantial energy, very little fructose will get delivered to the rest of the system. So we wind up with having this excess residue getting delivered in an abundance in the liver, which means it starts to store fat. Okay. So this is where we trigger that. So when you increase the levels of, li of, um, the liver fat, right? When you have those level levels of liver fat getting higher and higher, you'll have that increased level of fat moving also from the liver into the blood, okay? So this is important because that means you have more fat moving out into the blood, and that means you're also gonna experience higher levels of triglycerides and higher levels of cholesterol, okay? That's why a highly processed diet in highly refined sugars is also related to cardiovascular disease. You can start to see the connection. All right, so both of those elevate risks for heart disease, as I just mentioned, all right? Because what happens also when those glucose levels are rising is you get this restriction and you get this inflammatory response throughout the circulatory system. And that makes it harder for the blood to travel. That increases blood pressure and things of that nature. So. There's another problem, right? So it's also believed that your liver fat, when it's increasing, it also decreases your insulin's capabilities to do its job. So now we think about the increased risk of diabetes, then we have another problem, 
We have insulin not working properly. We have the causation of fructose turning into fat. And that's also gonna increase the amount of fat that the liver sends into the blood. So most people who consume very high levels of fructose, you can guess, they gain weight. And they gain that weight in the abdominal zone. We see that time and time again with a big belly. And then there's this metabolic sort of round table vicious cycle of diseases that perpetuate and get triggered each other. And one makes the next one worse. We've got things that I mentioned before, like high blood pressure. We have diabetes. We have excessive weight gain. We have strokes. We get heart disease. We can even get things like blurry vision. And so you can start to see why it's really important to start focusing on eating cleaner sugar so that we're really balancing out the metabolic response in the body. All right, so that's the liver. Let's now talk about what happens with sugar and your brain. <laughs> All right, because this is where the mental piece comes in with addiction. And most people might not know this, so I want to break this down for you. So when the sugar hits your tongue, and then when you eat sugar, I'm guessing you might crave more. I mean, who here can relate to having a cookie and then wanting more cookies, right? Or having some cake or some candy and just wanting more and more of that. So imagine you take a taste of something like a blueberry muffin or a donut. <laughs> People are eating donuts for breakfast, right? Um, the sugars in both of these will actually trigger the sweet taste receptors and the taste buds um, are found on the now, These also signal a, the, like a pop. They, they send a pop signal right into the brain stem. And then it splits off into many different areas of the front part of the brain. We know this as the cerebral cortex. Different divisions of the cere cerebral cortex actually process different tastes. So we've got bitterness, we've got saltiness, we've got that savory experience, and then of course we have the sweet. So from this point, the signal that activ activates the brain's reward system, which is a series of these electrical and very powerful chemical pathways across many different regions of the brain. This is an intricate network, network that exists in the brain, but it does also help us to have an answer to a very unique and subconscious question, which is, should I eat that again, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. There's a certain feeling you get when you eat your mom's homemade chocolate chip cookies or you eat some of her homemade apple pie. And it's like this reward system answering, yes, have more. <laughs> like who just has one slice? It's kind of hard. So food is one common trigger but there are others. There's things like drugs and alcohol. Those are two others that trigger that same exact reward system that gets processed or triggered or sparked in the brain. Now, when we overactivate, overactivate this reward system, this jumpstarts a whole series of very unhealthy events. You'll see things like you have a loss of control. That's why a lot of people say, get that stuff away from me. I have no control over that stuff. You crave more of it, right? And then you have this increased tolerance to sugar, which is why you need more and more and more over the course of time to get that high. Yeah. So but, let me take you back quickly right now. Did you want to hop in? Yeah, I wanted to jump in. You know, we talk about, and I think people should be cognizant of this, addictions can come and can uh, manifest themselves in various forms. But you're exactly right. If you are addicted to something, you have to keep going back to it. And your body, your mind starts telling your body, even if it's killing you, that it has to have it. You know, perfect example is smoking cigarettes. You know, nobody of any semblance of intelligence believes that so smoking cigarettes is good for the body, but your brain will start to out try and outsmart you to jump back to that. And, you know, I've, I've had my addictions in the past, but sugar was never one of them, fortunately for me. I've had other vices that were every bit as bad, but this is what I would suggest to people. Whatever your addiction is, if you are addicted, it's one thing to want that chocolate cake, but it's another thing to, to, for your mind to be telling you that you need it. And that's a signal that you may be chronically addicted 
to that substance and it may be sugar hopefully it's chocolate but it's probably sugar okay i'm done well not that one is like better than the other they're really they're not mutually exclusive so let's go back to the blueberry muffin or the donut for a second right or or both <laughs> some people are double double fisting um so when they move through your stomach and then they go into your gut and there's receptors there there's sugar receptors there all right and then they tell your brain that you're either full or that you need to produce more insulin to tend to the sugar that you just consumed right now let's go back also remember there's that reward system that built-in reward system it's like i mentioned that earlier we've got dopamine is the currency of that system we can trigger dopamine in a variety of ways but now we're talking about it with food it's a neurotransmitter right it's this naturally occurring chemical that our body produces and the forebrain has a lot of dopamine receptors, but they're not necessarily scattered evenly. And some areas have really dense clusters of those and they become part of this reward system. So let's consider things like you just mentioned. Let's consider nicotine, right? We talk about like, we know it kills us. We know it's not good for us, but you know, when you get the high, it's hard to kind of let go of that it becomes this addiction because you can't seem to trigger that on your own or trigger it high enough like you can with the drug. We've got nicotine, things like alcohol, uh, cocaine, right? Those are chemicals that send dopamine into a really heightened state, which leads some people into constantly pursuing that level of high and that level of joy and happiness and sort of freedom in their own body. They can't seem to, to create that level of freedom or joy on their own naturally. And that's, as you said, what we call addiction. So let me make the connection for you to sugar and why so many people feel so out of control around sugar. I know many people who feel this way. I grew up, I grew up with some of them. And sugar also does the same thing in the body, causing that dopamine to be triggered. On the other hand though, when food becomes boring, the dopamine will actually start to level off. So let's see what happens if you placed a sugar-laden meal in the body instead of a healthy option, right? So if you're someone who rarely eats sugar or doesn't eat a lot of that often, the effect may be sort of like that of the healthier meal when it comes to the dopamine levels. But if you overeat, then those dopamine levels don't level out, which means that eating a lot of sugar will keep feeling very rewarding to you. So now you have it reacting in your body like a drug would. And hence why people get hooked on those sugary foods like soda. I knew someone who used to go through a two liter bottle of soda a day for years. Me, 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 me. Ice cream. <laughs> yeah, ice cream. Like sometimes people want to eat the whole quart of ice cream, right. <laughs> not pint, the quart. Um, flavored and like, you know, Flavored coffees, I, I don't even want to call them flavored coffees. They're like, they're almost like, um, they're coffees that have like the whipped cream and all the other things going on inside of them. Like those highly sugary coffees that are not only loaded with the caffeine, but now you have the sugar, you have the two, the, the two, the two punch. So, you know, the various kinds of sugars you eat, like the refined ones that we're talking about here are the high fructose corn syrup. These are the ones you want to avoid. So whenever you're buying foods in the store, read, the ingredients so important to open up you know the side panel and take a peek at what you're going to potentially be putting in your body sucrose aspartame we've talked about that a lot before you know aspartame is tied to if you're listening to this and it's in any of your foods buyer beware headaches dizziness seizures depression attention deficit hyperactivity disorder adhd alzheimer's disease Multiple, multiple sclerosis. I mean, we're not talking about acne here. We're talking about some serious life debilitating diseases and cancer. Shall we just throw that in for the, the last one on the bullet list? Come on now, guys. We really want to reduce the amount of highly processed sugars that are in the body. They all begin a very serious domino effect in the brain that shoots out a spark for that rewarding feeling that we're talking about. And there are other ways to achieve it, by the way. So if you consume too much sugar too often, that's when things go into overdrive, all right? And you get a hyperactivity going on in the body. You can get anxiety, you get heart palpitations. 
Um, over consuming really refined and highly processed sugar also gets your brain addicted. This is now pretty clear where we're going with this. And it also creates the formation of something called acetic acid, carbonic acid, and alcohol. I just want to read you something from one of my most favorite books, Become Younger by Dr. Norman Walker. I'm not going to read all three passages, but I want to read at least one about the, the destructiveness of alcohol in the body. Now, what I'm saying here is the byproduct of eating highly processed sugar is that gets turned into alcohol. I'm not talking about just consuming beer or wine, okay? So the alcohol that gets produced in the system is equally destructive and even more devastating as it acts as a solvent for the elements in the body, which are only soluble in alcohol and are difficult to rebuild. It tends to destroy more or less gradually the texture of the kidneys. This is where renal failure comes into play. It affects the nerves, which are closely related to the brain and has the tendency, that's why we're talking about things like Alzheimer's, and has the tendency to disrupt the functions of observation, concentration, and locomotion in exactly the same manner that alcoholic beverages do, but of course, more slowly. Lastly, I want to say this before I go into how to reduce your sugar consumption is the other issue with sugar is that it produces something called advanced glycation end products. We call these AGEs in my world, which is what triggers that inflammation in the body that reduces proper cellular response. All the things that I just read from, from Dr. Walker's book, Become Younger, you have a reduction in the regeneration of new cells. You have things that might seem more subtle like uh, a lack of beauty, poor complexion, premature wrinkles on the skin, joint pain because your collagen is breaking down and not getting regenerated. All of these are triggering the premature aging and disease in the body. So that hopefully gives you some inspiration for changing over into some healthier sugars. And now I can talk about how to reduce sugar next unless you wanna share something. No, 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 no. It's 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 actually great information. But uh, yeah, what? Okay, so I'm going to make a concerted effort to cut out sugar, which I have done. What's your perspective on artificial versus natural sweeteners? Yeah, so the artificial sweeteners are going to cause a breakdown of cellular activity in the body. They're going to cause all of these other issues with premature aging and disease, cardiovascular disease. We talked about um, heightened levels of potentiality around um, diabetes and things of that nature. And so we really want to start putting things in the body that are going to be more readily absorbable of the, and uh, metabolized and support the body with having more natural forms of energy that are non-addictive. Okay. All right. So we're really working on um, retraining the brain here. So let me just talk about how you can go about um, really reducing the sugar consumption and moving over into healthier options. So here's the thing. We have to retrain the brain and the dopamine response in your body with the foods that you're eating, and the associations, that's really important, that we have with them. We also have to take out the garbage, right? We have to take out the garbage of the toxic load from the residue of eating those highly processed foods. You know, a lot of people don't understand what detoxification means and what it means to be toxic. When you eat foods that don't really belong in the human tissue, they leave a residue and our bodies become these receptacles for toxicity. So when we eat you know, processed sugar and it's combined with things like butter and milk and flour and eggs, we get what is known as this acid ash left behind in the body. Okay, there's another book called um, Your Health, Your Choice that is all based on the acid um, and the, the alkaline and acid balance in the body as well as this kind of ash response in the system from eating foods that the body is not really designed to consume. This triggers the inflammation, the disease, the aging that we talked about. And so you, when you introduce the healthy alkaline foods, right, they act like magnets in the body. They alleviate that waste that was once left behind. And this is why you start, to, when you start eating the healthier food, you might notice some really amazing things that feel like magic, right? You're like, wow, my skin looks clearer. It's less inflamed. It looks like there's like less wrinkles. There's less puffiness. I've got this, you know, brighter sense of um, mental acuity. I feel deeper sleep. I don't really feel the need to sleep so much. And I feel like I'm sleeping less, but I'm sleeping deeper. And this happens because we're elevating the oxygen levels in the body. 
the true food for our cells is oxygen. When we eat highly processed sugars, refined sugars, it dampens, it lessens the body's ability to keep the oxygen flow to the cells pumped up, keep the mitochondria activated. The mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cells, right? It's that oxygen powerhouse. It's working at maximum power when we're eating cleaner. You get high on the clarity of your cells yeah. instead of the sugar. I'll say it again, you get high on the clarity of your cells instead of the sugar, constantly triggering that dopamine through that highly processed sugar. So when you reduce that toxic residue and you begin to create these new associations mentally to joy with these new foods, you will easily leave that sugar addiction behind. That's really step one. Now, the easiest way to reduce those sugar cravings is to get more green juices in your diet and more brightly colored vegetables, of course, but juices are the fastest way to support that sugar addiction in decreasing. And now you also see that it's like the beginning of a new order. You feel like your brain is not so wired to grab for those highly processed foods. And you start to understand that your joy and the pleasure response of things like a big salad um, <laughs> are really connected to much longer lasting um, levels of energy. Because when you eat the highly processed sugars, you'll notice it's like a quick high and then it drops, right? But when you're eating clean, you have sustenance, right? We're looking for foods that create sustenance. And you begin to notice some really small changes, but they add up to such bigger shifts over time. Um, really quickly, I just wanna show this. You're asking like, what's my perspective like on artificial versus the natural sweeteners? Um, they're dangerous. The artificial sweeteners are dangerous. We mentioned aspartame. Artificial sugars are not life generating. Nay, nay, they age the body, they cause rapid cellular decline, they also cause addiction, bad breath, because they elevate that carbonic acid response and fermentation in the body, all the, all the inflammation, the skin problems, a decreased healing response in the body. When I start working with my clients, they're amazed at sometimes how simple things like a black and blue heals and clears up much faster. Um, a sore throat, if it comes on, it kind of comes and goes really fast disorders, liver disorders, obesity, we talked about that, adrenal fatigue, oh my goodness, the fight or flight response in the body that can be really dampened. Um, so let me just quickly share, because I know we need to wrap up here. The healthier sugar options that you want, we'll put these in the show notes. Maple syrup is at the top of my list. Coconut sugar, sucanat, which is sugar cane natural, dates, stevia, xylitol, which is made from birch tree, um, blackstrap molasses, great for iron levels. And then I would say raw honey. And that's everything I wanted to say today in a nut. <laughs> well, okay. And then I'll just- At high I'll, speed. I'll just add real, really quick. You know, people, if you're drinking a diet soda, go study that label. Because if you think it's a caffeine addiction, the reason you're craving it, think again, go make yourself some tea which would appease that caffeine addiction, and you'll still want that diet soda. Now, if you keep reading that label, you'll see that there's absolutely nothing in it but water, artificial flavoring, and this artificial sweetener. And I promise you, and added caffeine, but I promise you what you're addicted to is that artificial sweetener because there's no flavor in that stuff. I mean, in reality, I mean, if you remember the first one you ever drank, you couldn't understand why you were drinking it. So, you know, that's it for me. Uh, Joyce, I wanna thank you. I, th I think we should follow up on that. I, you know, I did a lot of research for this and I was confused. I was simply confused when I was drilling down <laughs> these artificial sweeteners and drilling down these natural sweeteners. And I think we could do a lot on it. And I think it will help people tremendously. So everybody, this has been Justin Case and Joyce Rockwood sharing, putting those sweeteners in perspective. That's fun to say. Thanks for joining us. Remember free gifts, additional information and links are provided in this video to read more. Please be sure to subscribe to this channel to stay connected and please connect with Joyce in the links below so you can learn a few healthy suggestions, learn how to be a sweetie in your own right and how not to go banana.